finally time for a rig rundown on my Cervelo P2. So here we go, at long last, it's finally finished. So starting up here at the top is the Pro Aerofuel Saddle. Um, when I got this bike it had a uh, ISM Adamo split nose saddle, which was comfortable but too wide. Um, so I swapped it for this Pro saddle which has a narrower front. It's not a split nose, but um, it's just so much more comfortable and I haven't had, had any issues um, doing long, long rides on the saddle and then running off the bike. And then beneath that, I took out the standard sort of Cervelo um, mounting uh, thing that's in the top of the seat post. Replaced that with a Profile Design RM10. So the seat attaches to that, and then um, attached to that is the Profile Design Vice bottle cage. Um, I really like these Vice bottle cages. I use them on, on most of my bikes. Um, never lost a bottle out of one of them. They hold on so tight. Really recommend them. I have the back cage on there. Um, I don't normally start a race with a drink in there. Um, occasionally I have in races that don't have um, aid stations, I'll take a spare bottle, but that's more there um, for if I grab a bottle in an aid station, don't finish it, or get outside the litter zone and don't want to um, ditch it, so I'll throw it in the rear cage. Um, but the, these vice cages are real easy to, to put the bottle in without looking, um, they slide in nicely and then, and then don't fall out. Moving up to the front, I've got a full profile design area cockpit. Um, I first got the area stem um, and connected that to the, the old profile uh, wing bar that was on here, and then uh, upgraded to the carbon area base bar and extensions. And then that's compatible with this uh, front mounted hydration as well. So uh, you can fill this on the go while you're riding, drink from it while you're still in the aero position. And um, I think this area stem is probably my favourite um, component on the bike because it obviously connects to this whole area front end, um, but it also houses the DI2 junction box, so hides a whole lot of cables. Um, previously it looked quite messy without that on there. Um, and then connected on the front of the area bars is my Garmin. Um, I've decided not to use the mount that came with the area hydration. That just bounced around a little bit too much on the road. So I've um, just put a zip mount there attached to, uh, to the right extension and that holds it perfectly. And it also means that the, the Garmin there has a mount even if I don't have um, the front hydration on because I, I normally only chuck this on for racing, not for, um, not for every ride. And then just back here, Got the Profile Design ATTK that mounts into the two uh, bosses that are in the top tube and normally I just use that for, for snacks, um, for food, for bars, um, sometimes gels during races so they're right there at easy reach. Moving down, um, I've done a video on this already. Um, this is a cool little feature that's actually 3D printed, made by Raj Sport in Germany. Um, so this, this frame has a bolt at the bottom there, um, but there's no sort of uh, easily accessible um, accessories from any of the, of the major brands. So um, Raj Sport print these, 3D print these, this is a tool storage. So in there I've got a tube, um, tire lever, a CO2 canister and a um, CO2 nozzle. And then that integrates nicely with the Elite Chrono CX Aero Bottle. Um, normally when I'm racing I put put gels into here, like three or four gels, um, top it up with water and, and just keep them mixed so I don't have to keep opening gels throughout the race, I can just grab it and drink from it. And, and that's super easy, um, integrates really nicely, it looks really slick. Um, the whole bike is running Shimano Ultegra Di2, 11 speed. Uh, it didn't come with that when I bought it, it came with uh, 105 mechanical. Um, but this frame is DI2 ready, so I, I deliberately bought it. I was on a really tight budget at the time, um, but the goal was always to upgrade it to DI2. So the DI2 groups, it came available from a friend that was upgrading a bike. Um, so I bought it, it's a couple of years old now, still running perfectly. Um, charge it up every month or so. Um, but yeah, DI2 is so easy for traveling. 
never needs any adjustment because you don't have to worry about cable stretching and that sort of thing. Um, I really rate it. Also upgraded the cranks. This is a FSA power box. It was a straight swap out because this bike came with an FSA Gossamer. Um, so the power box is a dual sided power meter. Same crank length and um, chain rings as what I had before with the FSA Gossamer. But this just, just has power on there so real important for training and racing because um, we do use, use the power numbers a lot. Um, and then I've also upgraded the brakes, so I upgraded those to Ultegra brakes as well. There was FSA Gossamer brakes on there when I got it. Um, these ones open a bit wider, which means it's easier to get um, sort of carbon wheels or wider wheels in and out. And they are just better brakes, they grip better, um, pull the bike up better. At the end of the cranks, we've got the Shimano 105 carbon pedals. Um, if you watch my giant propel rig rundown, I've got these pedals on that bike as well, and I sort of talk about why. Um, these are my pedals of choice, so I have those on all my road bikes. Moving on to the wheels, um, we've got the NS Carbon disc on the back, NS Carbon 88 on the front, and both of those have the Vittoria Corsa uh, graphene tires. And I've gone with the tan walls, just because I think it looks cool with the blue. No other reason, I just think it looks rad. Um, yeah, this is a nice wheel set, really good aero um, for, a, for a hillier race. I think I would probably go for a slightly uh, lighter profile on the front, a, a shallower profile. And also in the, in the cross ones, I, depending um, on how windy it is, I might, might shrink the front wheel down to a lower profile too. Um, the rear disc is actually awesome in cross ones. Um, it, it sort of sets up, sets up like a bit of a sail so you can you can lean into a crosswind and, and actually get a bit of um, propulsion from that. So um, it's really cool to ride with a disc on. I, the first time I tried it was on quite a windy day and I was quite nervous about it, but it was actually really cool to, um, to ride with the disc. So um, yeah, that's my, that's my go-to rear wheel for races. Um, the frame, I didn't even talk about the frame, but this was the old classic white and blue Cervelo, um, which you would have seen in the in other videos. Completely stripped back and repainted by Frameworks Bicycle Painting in Auckland. Um, Matt, who runs the show there, is uh, someone who's part of um, the coaching group that I'm part of, and and runs a business doing doing bike frames. So I went to him and I said, I don't want it to be white anymore. Um, it was always dirty when it was white. I felt like I was just forever cleaning it. Um, and it was also a really um, common frame. So there was a lot of them at races and, and I just didn't want my bike to look like every other bike. Um, I said to him, all I wanted was blue on blue. Um, I didn't give him any more um, instructions beyond that and put my faith in him. And he came back with this. So um, absolutely nailed the blue on blue. And got some really cool decals in here as well. Um, which which make it look awesome and I love it. I couldn't have dreamed up a paint job this good. I was just editing the video and realised I forgot to record an outro. Hope you like the rig rundown. Um, if you're racing in New Zealand this summer, you might see it out on course, um, depending on where I'm at. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. If you want any of those parts, I'm going to leave uh, links to as many of them as I can in the description if you want to jump online and buy them. Um, hope you enjoyed this video, thanks very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you don't already, and I'll see you in the next video.